Hey everyone, Phil from Trail Talk here. And first off, I just wanted to say thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. A year and a half ago, I never would have thought they would have reached this point, and it's all thanks to you guys. It's always great to see the regular commenters, and it always brings a smile to my face when I get a comment about a person buying a bike that I recommended or something like that. So it's absolutely awesome, and I'm absolutely stoked that I can give some advice to help you purchasing your next bike or mountain bike related product. And to celebrate 5,000 subscribers, I thought it'd be great to answer a question that a lot of you guys have, and that is, what is my top five favorite trails that I have ever ridden? Arimba has been a real staple for the channel. I think we've made over three videos there, in fact. Less than an hour drive north of Sydney, it's the closest thing we have to a real length racetrack with over 150 metres of descending as well as two kilometres long on the main downhill run. Which means it's long enough to get the legs burning as well as the arms pumping. While it won't please the highest level downhill races, it's perfect for shuttles on the weekend, mid-level downhill racing as well as gravity enduro racing as well. The classic DH trail is definitely my favourite there, starting off with those iconic berms that you can lie almost flat, switching back and forth which is awesome fun, and then you drop into the first rock garden which you can gap the rocks on the left, or you can go to the right and take the B line which is nice and easy, which then takes you into the first jumps. You can take the huge double to the right, or you can hit an easy table on the left, and both these jumps will please everyone. Then there's a nice little pedley section where there is the next set of jumps. There's a table as well as a double as well, so you can pick and choose your lines. And then there's a nice little drop into a left hand berm, which then leads you into a tight little section where you can really thread your way through and really gain some speed as you start to progress. And then this is where things start to really ramp up, pun intended there. You drop down the ramp and you hit some awesome speed. This is where you start to really notice a big difference between other trails in Sydney. You're just motoring down this section, it's nice and chunky, and you just get this sensation that you don't really get on other trails in Sydney. Then you can either roll over the ramp down to the bottom, or you can hit the double over and then go down the ramp, and then there's a nice little pedley section to the fire trail, where then you drop into the lower section. In this section, there's some more fast-paced single track with some nice little techie sections before you cross the fire trail into the main lower section. This is where you come to meet some high as well as low lines, which can definitely get a little bit sketchy in my experience. Oh my god, that's safe! Followed by this, you hit the switchbacks, which switch back and forth down into the valley. Followed by this, you hit a little drop, as well as the rock roll, which can catch some people out. Or if you don't want to roll it, you can just huck it completely. Then you switch back twice more before you drop down to the bottom of the valley, and then you're on the home straight. There's some still really fun parts here as well. You got the nice little sender drop as well as schlammerding, which is this rookie, rocky, rooty rock garden that you can kind of turn down as you're going down it, which is really fun. And then you get into everyone's favorite triple treat with the awesome berms back to back, which you can really lay over like the berms at the start of the trail. And then there's the really nice two doubles to finish as well, which you can absolutely send as you cross the finish line. What's even better, there's even more trails there as well. There's the XC loop, there's the all mountain trail with the big sender drop, there's the new super flowy upper gravity enduro line that now has the bridge over the old downhill run, and then there's a few more features that have popped up as well which is awesome to see. With a pump track, a new flow trail as well as toilet facilities coming soon, it's absolutely awesome to see Rimba finally getting the attention it deserves and it's going to be awesome to see how the trail system evolves. If you're ever looking for shuttles, definitely hit up Central Coast Mountain Bike Tours. I'll put a link in the description for them, as well as Central Coast Mountain Bike Club, and I'll put a link as well. They'll have all the information for races and updates on the trails and all that kind of stuff too as well. The next trail is my favorite in the Sydney Basin, and that's the left line going down Mount Nara which is around about 1.2 kilometers long with 116 meters of elevation. If I'm going riding in Sydney, it's usually this or my local trails. I like it because it balances tech and flow very well and I know I won't hurt myself on it and there's not too many surprises as it's one of the better maintained trails in the area. There is definitely a price for entry though. Like many trails, there's a feature at the start where you have to cash your check to be able to ride and that's the first rock roll and drop which you can easily skip, but to get the full experience of flow on Rampage, it's something to work up to. Then you roll into Anchors, which is where you can really let off the brakes and feel how good your bike handles the chunk. 
This can be tricky to get fast, and that's why we covered it on a how to ride fast video. So if you want to check that out, definitely check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Once you cross the fire trail into King Brown Alley, there's the rock gun that we worked in that video too. And there's the fast rock drop slash roll into a short pinch climb. Then there's a quick little pedal before you hit some rock rolls as well as some tight single track. Where you exit the berm into a fast section where you feel like the bike's really weightless below you and you're just flowing through the trees. This then sends you around a berm into a nice little tricky tight section which is a bit hard to get right sometimes until you hit the ultimate flow of happy endings. This trail is an absolute blast with two perfect doubles at the start to really learn jumping on and then there's a fast section weaving between the trees before you drop into that last section again which we worked on in that video finishing with a small step up at the end. This is the absolute perfect way to fit in a 30 to 40 minute ride with maximum grin factor. What I like about Nara, it's the perfect introduction to the Garrigal trails. So if you're finally mastered Old Man's Valley and Mill Creek and those kind of trails, it's a great natural progression to get into the area as well as hitting those other trails that are a little bit harder in the near future. For most of us living in New South Wales, Threadbow will be the only lift assisted park that we'll ever ride. And what Threadbow may lack for in trail variety compared to other bike parks, it definitely makes up for in the length of the trails and the amazing progression that they offer. Down at the base of the valley, there's the Threadbow Valley Trail, which is perfect for XC with amazing views. The All Mountain Trail now links up with the Valley Trail to give you an all day adventure, which starts at the top of the mountain with some more granite features at the top there, moving down into the tree line where the trail starts to become really flowy. I'm pretty stoked on this trail because it's the first trail that I ever raced so it does have a little bit of a special place in my heart. There are some fast fun sections at the start of where the racetrack starts which is still one of my favourite sections of trail. It's a great blue trail for those who want to get some speed compared to their local trails. Then there's the flow trail with around about 5 kilometres of pure flow as well as 500 metres of descending. This is absolutely awesome. There's big berms, fast open sections, switching back and forth across the ski slopes until you reach the bottom. And then we finally move on to the Cannonball Downhill Trail. This is truly a world-class downhill trail and it really is good to progress on. You can hit it slowly or you can really hit it at race pace and that's when things start to get really difficult. There's some fun features, there's jumps, techie sections as well as even a wall ride. Just one bit of advice, don't cook your brakes in the fire trail down to the trailhead. As I said, Threadbow is a little bit different to other bike parks around the world and that's mainly due to the fact that it's in a national park. So they only have a limited amount of trails that they can really work with and then they can only really add to the trails very incrementally just because of this factor. So I like to think of Threadbow more as a lift assisted kind of trail network. So you get those longer, more trail style trails and then you've got the downhill trail for those who really want to go fast. <laughs> Now to pick one trail in Canberra was tough for me. Stromlo was one of my first experiences riding out at Sydney and it really opened my mind to what trails can be like with a bit more elevation. The thrill of going down Western Wedgetail, Pork Barrel and Double Dissolution is a run that dreams are made of. But Majira Pines takes the cake for me just for the fact that it reminds me so much of Queenstown Bike Park in New Zealand, flying through some pines at some decent speed. There's a huge variety of trails and what they may lack for in a bit of length, they make up for in fun. My personal favourite is Barry and it's great fun. There's some fun fast sections as well as those two doubles about halfway down which are the perfect length for developing skills. Then you cross through to Planet Clare which is a bit cruisy before you open up into the clearing which is an absolute blast. So fast and flowy that I just session this over and over every time I go there. My other favourite trail is Rock Lobster and it gets you up to some real bike park speeds. Going up and down the gullies at the start and then through the pines. For then for some extra credit halfway down there's the doubles as well as the rock garden which you can hit at some decent speed and clear. Ending with some awesome switchbacks and again there's a big double at the end to test your progression. I also had a great stack here once too. Moral of the story, never celebrate too early. If you're looking for some more bike park style trails without the arm pump or lift cues, Madura Pines is definitely worth a look. There's definitely some fast sections and some good tech too. So yeah, if you're in Canberra, definitely check it out. No list of the best Australian trails should not have derby and that's why I've saved the best for last. 
I apologize for the poor quality footage, but this was just before I started the channel, so the footage isn't the best. Derby is Australia's most famous trail network, and that's for good reason. EWS quality trails and day-long backcountry adventures, it's got it all backed up by an awesome local community. Quick shout out to Mad MTB who did my shuttles when I was there. They offer a great service at a great price. So definitely, if you're going down there, give those guys a look. Onto the trails, I've only been once, but I still talk about it every week pretty much. Even though it was rainy and cold, the soil drains super well and the granite is super tacky. It really pleases all riders. There's endless flow, beautiful scenery, jumps, tech, and pure speed. I got the full derby experience when I was there, crossing some flooded rivers, doing black shuttle runs, and then also doing some backcountry riding that Atlas offers. Trouty, like most people, was my personal fave. Riding a blind definitely makes it interesting, but when you get to the opening on the huge slap, it really makes you remember why mountain biking is so great. Then you get into the lower tech section, see old mate Trouty, and then slowly make it down the last bit of tech to the town. So there you go, there's my top five favorite trails. If I was gonna add a bonus trail, which I probably would have if I had decent footage, it would definitely be Mount Gladstone at Kuma. So if you're definitely going down to Threadbow, definitely hit this trail system up, especially the blue flow trail that they have there called Gladiator. It's absolutely awesome. There's awesome berms. The doubles are the perfect size for beginner to intermediate rides to really progress on. There's this awesome rock that you can kind of wall ride. And then they've just added to the trail network and there's a new downhill trail there and there's two other black techie descents as well which has some nice jumps in there too. So if you're heading down towards Kumue, check these trails out because they're absolutely awesome and they've done a great job building them and building a community around them. So I just want to say thanks again for 5,000 subscribers. I know I haven't posted as much frequently and this has definitely given me the motivation to start producing a lot more videos for you guys. So I'm excited to start bringing you guys a lot more content in the near future. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Also leave a like, definitely comment as well. I love answering all you guys' comments. I always try to answer every question that I get. So yeah, definitely leave a question no matter what it is. And as always guys, thanks for watching. See ya.